Today's video is going to be a little different. Today I am going to be analyzing the Canadian reality series Kenny vs. Spenny. I am also going to be responding to a video which questions the authenticity of a specific episode. Not much more of an intro than that, let's just get started. As an aside, this is a prop dresser for theater. It only has two sides and is only made to look like a dresser with drawers. It does not have drawers. We've actually seen this dresser before in several episodes. In season four, it was to the right side of Praxor, and at the beginning of season five with the episode Who Can... So you can see it. Who Can Keep a Dump in Their Pants the Longest, we can see it on the left side. The only difference being is that the bottom board is still there, whereas in this episode, it's missing. But we can see the line of separation in the exact same spot, which I think indicates that this isn't just a dresser that they put in for this scene for him to fall off of. It's a dresser that's been in the room for quite a while. Seeing as how the house was specifically just for shooting Kenny versus Spenny, I don't think it's that unrealistic that they'd have some prop furniture. As Spenny climbs over Praxor, the prop dresser tips over. When he hits the ground, we can see his left hand on the chair frame, his right hand on the now collapsed prop dresser, his left leg on one side of the pole dangling over Praxor, and his right leg on the other side of the pole. The pole bangs into the back of his right knee, and there is a quick zoom to hide his right foot, which is possibly touching the ground. I don't necessarily believe that the zoom was to hide Spenny's foot touching the ground. Spenny's foot goes all the way out of frame, even at the original point from which it was zoomed in from. If the camera had not been zoomed, we still would not have seen Spenny's foot. So why does the post-production zoom exist? Um, a speculation that I have is that it's possibly to keep Spenny in the center of the frame. I know, this is a pretty weak argument to start the video out with. I realize this sounds like me overdosing on copium, but I think it is possible that it was zoomed in just to keep Spenny in the center of the shot. Or, it's possible that his foot didn't touch the ground, and the zoom was just to hide any sort of question of it. I don't think it's impossible for his foot to have not touched the ground. And even if it did touch the ground, that doesn't necessarily mean that he would have lost the competition. Generally, the rules of the show have been built upon the crux that breaking the rules only really counts if you're caught by the other guy. In the episode, Who Can Keep a Dead Octopus on Their Head Longer? Kenny takes the octopus off his head when he's alone upstairs in his room. In Who Can Be Obese Longer? Kenny almost immediately removes the weights when he's out of sight. In fact, if you count Spenny touching the ground here being an immediate loss, then you have to overturn all of Kenny's wins that that he achieved by cheating with. If the zoom is to hide Spenny really touching the ground, then I'd have to assume that it's to keep the narrative consistency of the competition afterwards. I think it's very likely that the cameraman didn't even notice Spenny's foot touch the ground, and that it was only noticed in editing and then cut out later. We did not see the pole banging into his ankle. It was definitely the back of his knee. As we continue the scene, the camera cuts to show his ankle touching the pole where his knee was a moment ago. In this instance, the cut is the trickery. The cut is trying to hide his foot on the ground. The cut is to hide him moving his leg back so the competition can continue. I also don't think that the cut necessarily is trying to hide something that Spenny moved his foot off the ground and then back onto the dresser. I think there's a possibility that Spenny's foot was dangling over the ground and then he put it behind the bar to support it to keep it from touching the ground. The final Spenny scene I want to look at is this one where he gets into the chair. It starts after he attacks Kenny on the couch. Spenny is seen standing on his pots, then it cuts directly to him sitting in the chair. This cut from the stairs to the chair is hiding Spenny touching the ground. Look at Spenny standing here. He is at the top of the pots, no problem. Now the next time we see the pots, Spenny is already in the chair. Look at the pots. Look at the giant hole in the top of that one pot. The only way that could have happened is if his foot went all the way through it and touched the ground. If his foot did not go all the way through, it just would have a partial break and, and a crack in it, but there's clearly an oblong foot-esque hole in the top of that pot. It is highly likely that the pot broke while he was standing on it. However, I don't necessarily think that this means he touched the ground. If Spenny's foot had to have gone through the hole that was created, then it also had to have landed on the piece of pot that was broken off. Not to mention the ropes and cables that Spenny has installed all throughout the house. He could have simply grabbed onto one of those ropes to stabilize himself before his foot touched the ground. From what we can see, it looks like that the pot broke between Spenny standing at the door and Spenny standing at the sex chair. And between the door and the sex chair, we can see two cables dangling across. If it broke at the sex chair, then Spenny could have caught himself either on the 
pole of the sex chair, or either of the ropes. All I'm saying is that there are a few possible explanations as to why the pot might be broken, but he didn't touch the ground. Maybe the pot broke in between Spenny's walk from the door to the sex chair, and then the crew just moved it to keep the narrative consistent. Maybe Kenny just broke it afterwards and they cut it out of the show. Sebi has gone on record and indicated that the scene where Kenny falls is a reshoot. One of the only factors that cannot be recreated is the natural lighting from the windows. Leading up to the end, the scene is brightly lit with the doorways being near white. And during the reshoot fall, it's much darker in those doorways. Look at the lighting behind Spenny and look at it again here. These are different shoots cut together. As Spamerica points out, the only time where the outside looks completely overexposed is when there's other sources of light in the room. When too much light is on camera, it overexposes the brightest parts of the shot, which, you know, would be the sun. I took some photo comparisons using my friend's kitchen and you can see just how dramatically the difference is between them. Lights on, lights off. These were taken at the exact same time, yet it looks significantly brighter outside with more lights in the room. If these two photos were taken at the same time, why couldn't these two shots have been taken at the same time? I've tried to track down this claim that Sebi admitted that this was a reshoot and that some of the shots interspersed were just redone. I can't find it. I watched his interview on Just Chill. I didn't hear him mention it there. Maybe I missed it but I just, I just cannot find this. So it's possible that this is a rumor, but even if we were to believe that this is a reshoot, that's okay. Kenny could have fallen down in the living room, and the camera crew either missed it, or the footage corrupted, or a number of other things that happen when you're shooting an unscripted reality show. His claim is that in the scene where Kenny falls off the Segway and loses, there's shots interspersed of a reshoot. There's a quick shot of Kenny stumbling in the living room, and then the fall we see in the episode about 15 feet closer to Spenny. Something else that could indicate a reshoot that the original video doesn't mention is that Kenny isn't holding Ryan as he falls. Kenny exits the room holding Ryan. He is holding Ryan again in the living room when he loses his balance. And then Kenny moves like 15 feet closer to Spenny, not holding Ryan. This is a continuity error, so if we were to believe that this shot was redone, this could support that theory. The America disagrees and says that it's possible Kenny just threw Ryan somewhere because Kenny wanted to ram things with a segue. I'm not sure if I really believe that or if I think that's a satisfactory explanation because of the characters Kenny was playing at the time. I also feel like we'd see Ryan like anywhere in the room. I am not able to spot him. At the same time, I am not about to call the entire episode fake because of a piece of fucking bread. One of the shots in the supposed reshot segment is this frame, which as he points out is reversed. Now, I originally thought that this image was reversed because it was captured by the cinematographer in the door frame, and to keep the perspective consistent, they flipped it. But we can still see the penny next to Kenny's head and the stack of newspapers. So why is it reversed? In this scene, with Kenny laying on the ground, I notice one big error. Can you see it? His missing finger is on the wrong hand. Similar to the quick zoom, the editor can mirror image a scene during the edit. I have no idea why they would have done this here. Here's the neat thing. I don't think that this is reversed horizontally. I think this shot is reversed vertically. Now there's a theory for you. In the shots proceeding up to this, we see Sebi walking up the left of Kenny as he laid on the floor. He got a few shots of him normally. He walked up to the side of Kenny, and then we cut back and we see this shot. I think Sebi could have continued his path up to the left of Kenny, down and went around and was capturing him upside down when he put his hands over his face. We can see how much closer the camera is to Kenny, which is what would have to do since it's a narrow space to be standing in. The editor probably thought that it was a strong visual and wanted to use it, but they didn't want to include the shot upside down, so they flipped it vertically. Now, normally when I would edit something and I'd want to show it upside down, I would turn it around like this, but maybe they didn't have that feature in whatever editing software they use. So they used some feature to flip the video and said, but instead of flipping it around 180 degrees, they mirrored it. If we take the image of Kenny and flip it vertically, we can see that his missing finger is now on the correct hand. And I think that's also why we see Sebi's shoes here. He is standing over Kenny, filming down at his shoes. 
In fact, because they're in the upper left of the frame, it makes more sense, because otherwise, Sebi would be holding the camera upside down to get this shot. Why else would Sebi's feet be at the top of the frame and not the bottom of the frame? He then argues that if Spenny touched the ground, which personally I am really skeptical to admit, that he didn't lose because the competitions are largely irrelevant to the series, and that Spenny was supposed to win, and that it's really just about them interacting with each other. The competitions are largely irrelevant, no. No, I'm not accepting that as an answer. He points out how in the previous 10 episodes, which by the way span over an entire season gap, so there'd be a year of time between these episodes, that Kenny won 8 of the last 10, and the two episodes that he didn't win were still technically Kenny wins. I'd like to counter-argue with the entirety of season 6. Out of the 13 episodes in season 6, Spenny wins 1 in who can produce the best commercial. And even in that episode, Spenny cheated because he flubbed the results of the focus group test. Like, they were blown away. I mean, they were, they, honestly, they were blown away. So everybody right with their wrong hand. You're going to be Timmy. You're going to be Marie. Okay, yeah, come on. It's not a gorilla. Just come on. Kenny winning an entire season's worth of competitions, except for one episode late into the season, is what I believe to be enough evidence in itself to prove that Spenny was never required to have a certain amount of wins at this point. I say at this point because I do believe that in season two of the show that the broadcasters were interfering a lot with the competitions. The only time in the show's history where the broadcasters said that Spenny had to win an episode was in the episode, Who Has the Biggest Balls? Not to point fingers, well actually exactly to point fingers, I'm trying to explain what I think happened. I think the game show network was involved heavily in manipulating the episodes. In another episode, Spenny wins, Who is the Better Rapper, which is by the way the worst episode in the entire series. The entire episode just feels uncomfortably structured and scripted. In Who Can Win a Rat Race, the woman we see being depicted as Spenny's mom isn't really Spenny's mom, which was the basis of the entire conflict of the episode. In First One to Be Mean Loses, the rules just simply weren't enforced at all, so the episode ended in a tie. In Who is the Better Journalist, Kenny just forfeits the entire competition for sex. Look at your body. What about the competition? Fuck the competition. No, I don't believe it. Even for someone as promiscuous as Kenny, I really don't think that he would intentionally sacrifice a win just for that. The only other time where Kenny has forfeited a competition is the episode Who is the Better Boxer? And that time I do believe it because I believe he felt bad for locking Spenny in a closet for over a day. <laughs> Kenny doesn't even sound that interested when he's saying fuck the competition. In First One to Talk Loses, Kenny also loses the competition entirely to have sex. I think this one's a little bit more believable, it's just the same excuse they used in the later episode. In the episode Who Can Stay Naked the Longest, Spenny is wearing something that covers penis despite that being against the rules. I don't think it's a coincidence that the season with the highest percentage of Spenny wins was the only season that involved the game show network. In this season, Spenny wins 38% of the time when his series average is 25% of the time. Despite its namesake, I think the Game Show Network didn't really consider Kenny vs. Spenny to be a legitimate game show. They saw it more as just a comedy series and figured it'd be okay to interfere with the integrity of the show. These are just assumptions because it would just be a wild coincidence that Spenny just happens to win significantly more often involving them. GSN has blatantly edited and messed with other episodes of the show. In the episode Who is Funnier, they changed the content of the letter that Kenny gives Spenny from convincing him he has AIDS to convincing him he has gonorrhea. They changed the opening title sequence to include the word games to make it fit in better with the game show network. All I'm saying is that season two is really the only season that has a significant amount of uncomfortable conveniences, and I don't think it's even Kenny and Spenny's fault. I think it's just GSN interfering with the show. But going back to the statement that the competitions are largely irrelevant to the show, 
I heavily resent that statement. The competitions in the show are exactly what accentuates the dynamic between Kenny and Spenny. Kenny blatantly cheats and bends the rules into his favor, and Spenny tries to resist his efforts to foil him. Spenny tries to remain in the so-called spirit of the competition and still triumph evil. The show is essentially happy versus sad, good versus evil. And if you eliminate the versus part of it, then what's the point? What's the point of the show? It's just funny to just watch these people fucking prank each other. I think the rules can change as the episode goes on, but I highly disagree with the level of foul play some of these people are accusing the show of. And in fact, some of these people look so deeply that they just overlook evidence that's sitting right in front of them. Going back to the episode First to Talk Loses, KVS Facts argues that Spenny lost the competition because he can hear the words Donnie and fuck you. Did you know that Spenny was actually the first one to talk? Here is why. Donnie. 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 Spenny calls out for Donnie to come help him twice. He also says two other things that I think are Kenny and fuck you. Kenny wins. Now I could argue right back and just show him this scene. Clear as day, I can hear Kenny saying, are you there? But in the episode, they just graze over this. If they needed Spenny to win this episode, why would they not have just accepted that as evidence? That sounds like a pretty good scapegoat for it. If you want to get down to the technical, Spenny blatantly loses one second into the competition. Okay, let's get this competition started. Okay. On three. Three. Two. Other than in season two, I think the rest of the competitions in the show are basically as legitimate as they're presented to be. Now, I'd like to shout out Spamerica, who goes into even finer detail than I did about this. And I'd also like to shout out KVS Facts, even though I believe he got a lot wrong in his video. Now, of course, I'd like to shout out Kenny vs. Spenny. It's a pretty fantastic show. You can find every episode of it on YouTube. And please go and run up the numbers because I want KVS7 to happen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.